Thanks for tuning in to Off the Wall. I'm your host, Joshua Wall, and joining me on today's episode is Joan Minnery from Joan Minnery Enterprises. Joan, Woo-hoo! thank you so much for being here today. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. It's so great to see you. I wish we could be together in person, but for now, this will have to do. Yeah, well, there's a big virtual a hug. A virtual if, hug. If I go this way, because your hair is big, so we'll go this way. I love it. I needed that more than you'll ever <laughs> know. So, Joan, first things first. Who's Joan? Who is Joan? Well, um, I just turned 55, so Freedom 55. Uh, I'm a Brantford resident uh, most of my life. I actually live in the exact same house that I was born in up on Martin Ave. Um, I am the daughter of Bill and Elsie Minnery, um, English immigrants uh, from Liverpool, both uh, World War II veterans. I'm the uh, younger sister, because I'm the baby, of uh, John, Anne, and Bob Minnery. Uh, went to St. Pius when I was younger, North Park graduate, Mohawk College graduate, Brock University graduate. And um, now I am the proud mother, uh, although he's going to be 29 soon, of uh, my, can you believe that, Josh? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm a proud mother of my son, um, William uh, B.J. Minnery, and the girlfriend of Keith Curley. And I am the teacher of uh, hundreds upon hundreds of dancers and singers here in Brantford uh, through uh, various organizations that uh, I head up. And yeah, music teacher. Uh, Brantford resident and uh, complete Elvis nut. Okay, it's kind of me in a in a little bit of a condensed version. That was that was wonderful, Joan. So when I think Joan Minnery, I immediately just music starts playing in my head. I think about music. Has music always been just a, an instrumental part of your life? Oh, good segue. Well, <laughs> we're from Liverpool, so yes. Hey, okay? uh, grew up on the Beatles and uh, Charlie Pride and and Elvis and a lot of country music. Um, I discovered Elvis when I was six years old, actually on the Commander Tom show, which was to be on four o'clock, and they used to have Elvis Week. So I discovered Elvis the actor and uh, in all the movies and uh, and then Elvis just be- became just you know everything to me and I was six and but again um, our, our family have always been musical uh, anybody who is from England normally sings a lot um, especially if you're from uh, Liverpool and my, my dad uh, and mom were were both in uh, World War Two where they were both uh, my mom was a red and my dad was a sailor so they sang and uh, and they danced very well. And um, my uh, my brother John uh, was a, a pianist, um, did not sing, but uh, he was a, a great musician. And my sister Anne and Bob are both musicians, and um, we just we we grew up in music. So it's it's always been with us, whether we've been dancing or singing. So it's just kind of combined. It's just a it's definitely a family uh, history of uh, of music and really really bad um corny jokes like bad i i I expect a couple of corny jokes somewhere in this uh, (laughs) episode then okay i want to hone in so to me again i think joe minnery i think music um but you as long as i have known you have always been an entrepreneur yeah Mm -hmm. you are always somebody who is involved in so many different things in our community and I want to do a deep dive here. So we're talking about, you know, student Joan, you know, all those years ago. Um, did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up, before you grew up? Well, I started out, I wanted to be a doctor. Um, that was, I was going into med school um, right up until grade 11. Uh, and then I, what? Um, chemistry. Chemistry. Um, and I realized that my marks and my, just my comprehension of the courses that I needed to have to get into Mac, I just was not there. My brain just did not work that way. Um, and I, I was a great student and had great marks, but when I started having to do the, what was compulsory to get into med school, um, that just kind of, it's not that the dream died, it just, it went somewhere else. And um, I've always sang and I've always danced, but that was just, that was just a part of me. I, it wasn't anything I wanted to do as a career. Um, I certainly, when I was younger, I expected to be a movie star, but I think we all did. Um, and then I just kind of, uh, as I 
you know, started applying to uh, university and, and applying to college. And I just decided to, uh, to go into early childhood. Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of, I just went off on a different tangent that I, I knew I wanted to teach. Um, because I, I started teaching really, I started teaching young at 16. Um, I was just teaching various courses. I was taking a babysitting course. I was teaching swimming lessons and, and a couple of dance classes. So yeah, just kind of, so I was going to be Dr. Minnery and I turned into, uh, being a teacher and I've, I've taught anything and everything since I was 16. So I'm now 55. So it's, uh, it's been a long time teaching. Um, and you name it, I've, I've probably taught it well, somewhere. somewhere. We're, we're going to name it. I'm going to ask you to name it. This episode is all about Joan. So Good. how do we okay. go? How do we go from there yes. to here? To where we are today? Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I, I, I went to Mohawk. Um, I was in the ECE program, uh, graduated from there. Um, went right into working at the W. Ross McDougall, uh, McDougal, W. Ross McDougal. McDougal School for the Blind, um, and uh, was working in the classroom as a, as a teacher's aide. Um, and then, lo and behold, I just happened to decide this is this is the true story of how this all happened. I decided I was going on an African safari, and within the travel brochure that I had was an ad advertisement for junior good times. Um, it was just a, it was out of Regent holidays. And my sister said to me, why don't you apply to work there? And I was working at the, at the, at the blind school. Um, and, uh, but I, I just, I needed more. I just, I, I, I have always wanted more. And so, and she said, why don't you just apply there? Honest to gosh, Josh, I had the job nine days later. And I took off. I went to the Dominican Republic, and um, lived there for two years. Met my uh, met my husband, which is BJ's dad, and um, I and again. But I, I taught. I taught kindergarten down there, and um, and so I and uh, and taught art. And I can't draw, but uh, we did it anyway. And um, taught aerobics on the beach. Didn't matter. I just I, I could find whatever it was uh, that I was doing. I, I sold jewelry. And um, uh, we, we got we got married, um, had a you know beautiful Caribbean wedding, and um, BJ BJ came very quickly, um, and uh, then came back home, um, it, and then you know started uh, doing stuff here. Um, turning keep point going, Joan. Yeah, keep yeah, going. Keep going. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. Turning point <clears throat> for me uh, really was when uh, when my brother passed away. Uh, my brother John died in uh, December 12th of 1992, and um, all of us were just so devastated because it, it was as if uh, a cannon had been shot through our family. And uh, my brother uh, started writing music. My sister started recording. She was in Europe, um, and I started dancing um, because we we all needed t some sort of um, way to, to to you know deal with our grief. And I discovered line dancing. And uh, walked into Danny's ho ho, and on again, true story. Uh, three months later, I was teaching the class. So, because uh, that's just what I do, I teach, and uh, that's where the Grace Liners were born. Okay, um, and then you know we stood, and Elvis became a not just a big part of my my, my life. He became all of my life. So yeah, we uh, Grace Liners toured. Uh, we toured all over the the states and uh, and Canada. Of course, you know BJ was growing up and and uh, touring with us, and then um, came back home and um, left the Grace Liners and uh, started at Memphis Motion, which is where I met you, and um, then uh, and and I went back to my roots. Okay, obviously I need to do my roots, but. <laughs> but we went back to I went back to my roots, which was singing, because I had been dancing for so many years, and uh, it's like so. Okay, well, the Grace Liners was about dance and about saluting Elvis that way, and then Memphis Motion was about singing Elvis songs, and not dressing up as Elvis anymore, just being me and bringing some friends in to uh, to sing, and that's really where my big. Um, I say my big splash in Brantford um, really started happening because um, I know everyone knew me with the Grace Liners, but I was part of a group. 
Whereas Memphis Motion, I was the I was the lead singer, and I don't think a lot of people had heard me sing. Not you know, probably not since high school, and um, and that's all, that's where I you know started getting you know well known, and uh, and we started doing shows, and and we start then we produced the Branford Elvis Fest, which was immensely successful. Um, you know, one of the well, it was the second biggest Elvis Fest uh, in Canada, and and award winning, and we're very very proud of that. And uh, BJ was getting older, and he started taking music lessons. And uh, Jamie McDonald was the, um, I, I know you know Jamie. Um, Jamie McDonald was the vocal music teacher, and she put in her um, resignation. I just happened, again, just happened to be sitting in the chair when she, when she handed it in. It was all good. She, she was leaving for good reason. She was going uh, to teacher's college. And um, I had the job 10 minutes later, so... That's where I started teaching. That was at the Ontario Conservatory of Music. And, um, and so like Memphis Motion was like so popular and so strong and Elvis Fest had already been established. And um, yeah, I just started teaching. It was just, I, I had already been teaching the, the, the girls and a couple of the guys that I was working with and I was teaching like Elvis lessons as well. So it wasn't anything that I, that I hadn't done. And, and I certainly had the credentials uh, for sure. And um, yeah, and I, but it wasn't supposed to be, uh, it was supposed to be like a hobby and it's become my absolute part, not just my part-time job, but it is my, my, the job. And uh, yeah, started, uh, that was in 2001. I've actually just celebrated my 20th anniversary um, just a, a couple of weeks ago. So I've been teaching uh, vocal music now for, for uh, 20 years and I am um, that kind of seg segued into, I think is segued the word? Um, the right word. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a new word. Just a segue. I segued into um, teaching theater, and uh, again, you know, just you know, just I think I I'm always looking for for new ventures, and I I love teaching, I, and I, I I love teaching anything. Um, it's just I don't know maybe it's because I, I you know I like to be in charge, but I I'm I I like what I do, and my my students flourish, and I I know the contacts I have with them. Um, because they're still, you know, they invite me to their weddings now and, and, you know, I meet, I meet their children. Um, so like, like I know, like we've done a good job and, um, lo and behold, my students started, uh, winning awards and I was like, wow. Now, mind you, there's a, I've been blessed with some great voices as well. So it's like, like yeah, I, I have to take a little bit of the credit, like just a little bit, but like. Mostly it's because there's some, there I've had some great great students, and um, yeah, and then we you know then from there we started the Brantford Idol, which you know you 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 helped with sound for that uh, for a couple of uh, I think think a couple of uh, competitions, and um, yeah, so there's and it just goes on and on. I could go talk for hours about we're, what, what I've done. We're gonna so, yeah. we're gonna go on so and on. <laughs> yeah. And, so you um, mentioned. You mentioned you like to start ventures. And I think that in your words, uh, this is a perfect segue into Joan Minery Enterprises. Allow me to, from my outsider's opinion, I, I said earlier in the show, uh, I think June, uh, sorry, I think Joan, I think music, I think events, I think community, I think you're an author, you're a public figure, you're somebody who's involved in so many different things. And you know, again, your students, uh, how many awards have they won? How much is going on? Talk about Joan Minery Enterprises. Uh, if you, if I had to ask you, you know, we, we bumped into each other and I hadn't seen you in a long time. And I said, hey, what's Joan Minery Enterprises? What's your elevator pitch? And then we'll unpack it as we go. Okay, well, Joan Minery Enterprises is my is my private business, or you know, or my self entrepreneurship. Um, the tagline is motivation, movement, and music. It's it's a three M's. It's what I do. So the motivation is for my mo motivational speaking and my the the books that I have written, um, walking my way back to me, which is my autobiography, um, Echoes of the Ripple, which is the biography of many folks that I have met along the way who have been inspired or fit inspired um, by my story or by me. So it's it's their stories, and then I'm uh, currently working on. 
um, Timothy the Tree, which is a, a new children's online series as well. So that's the motivation. And um, I love, love, love doing motivational speaking. I've been very successful at it. I've, um, I've made a fantastic career. Now, obviously with COVID, we haven't been able to do a lot of that, but let's just pretend that it doesn't exist because like, I, I have to go with the last 10 years of my life that has been a, a huge part of, uh, of what I do. And, you know, speaking for not just weight loss groups and not just women's groups, like you name it, I've, uh, I've probably been in front of the audience. And my whole thing is just, you know, get them interacted and, and interactive and, and have some fun and do lots of comedy and just talk about, you know, the, the wonderment of I am or you are. So that's the movement, uh, motivation. Movement is dance and Zumba. So uh, still teaching line dancing after many, many, many years, actually many, many decades. Um, but yeah, and um, I uh, currently working at Dance Etc, which is a brand new dance studio, which is on top of the Rossini Lodge um, okay, on, uh, on Gray Street and uh, it's a fantastic place. And um, again, when COVID is not there, I teach, uh, you know, two mornings per week and uh, one evening per night. And, uh, and Zumba, which is, when I'm not teaching line dancing, I'm teaching Zumba, okay? So that's the, the movement. And then obviously music is all about my music lessons, which I teach back here. Um, my solo shows uh, when I'm out in the community at, uh, you, know, uh, you know, retirement homes or, you know, I might be performing for the Rotary Club or uh, the Optimist Club or something like that. And, and, and I do, and again, Prior to COVID, I, I did that, you know, almost every day. And my band, which is Civil, S-I-V-L-E, which is... L What's that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's my band with my son, uh, my son, Bill. Um, you know, I still call him BJ, but, and Bill, uh, my brother, Bob, Big Easy Bob, and, uh, and Dan Taylor. And um, we're doing amazingly well. And we started writing original music and... Wow. See, I, and because I am an Elvis fan and, 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 and an Elvis artist and, you know, grown up with the Beatles, we've always done cover tunes. Like we never even thought of, well, it's not that we ever thought about writing original music. Like BJ does or Bill does and always has. Like, like his, his schlick has always been, you know, original music, especially with Brad. And, um, but so Civil started writing original music and we wrote an, like an incredible tune called Whatever It Takes and it took off uh, on the indie charts and uh, we won a couple of awards and it nominated for, you know, lots of things. Um, wrote a great tune in 2020 called Throw Down Those Stones, which we thought was going to be our push through song and it was going to be the one that get on the radio. COVID hit. We didn't get a chance to, um, you know, to uh, capitalize on it, but we will. And then um, I approached my students whose all of their shows have been taken away. And I said, listen, we've got to keep motivated. We've got to do something. So how about you and I, it, so you individually and I work together and let's all write our own original songs, which we did. So 16 of my students and I throughout 2020 wrote all original songs. We released it on December the 12th, 2020, and that album is playing all over Europe and doing extremely well, uh, also in the States. And it's basically, and the name of it is Sing It Brantford 2020 compilation album. And I'm really proud because I've got one of my students is six years old and she's, she's on the radio, you know, in, uh, in Scotland. And uh, yeah, so we're having fun and um, doing lots. Uh, you know, I've been very in inspired um, from COVID because I, I think positive all the time and I always try to think out of the box and we can, you know, we can get down and down and down with the, you know, I see some people doing, and it's like, well, we got to use this time because it's not going to be like this forever and we can either get stalemated or we can get invigorated and so that's what we did and so i have released six songs already that i wrote this year uh it's already on spotify and itunes and uh all, you know amazon music and all that i've already just released another album um 10 days ago 
and I'm going to do more. So, but 55, and it's like, why not? Hey, okay? you know, it's like, you know, you can, you can get built in with the bricks and you can get down about what's happening or you can get up. And that's what I'm all about. You know, it's like my motto used to be put down the fork and get moving. Now it's just get up, <laughs> you know, like, you know, just, you know, you are, you are responsible for the energy you bring into your own space. And you and I've talked about this before, Josh. And okay? so if your own space is just filled with negative energy and, and, and you're just and you, like, see how I'm just becoming like, you know, just a little, little, or you can become the whole space. Okay. But you are, you're responsible for whatever you bring into your space. So you wake up every morning going, I am positive and I am great and I am wonderful and I am pretty, um, you know, and I am healthy. Then that's what, that's what you're going to bring into. Preach, your Joan, preach. Yes. yes. Well, it's, it's so much preaching. It's teaching. Okay? But that's Teach, that's Joan, is. teach. Uh, yeah. It is like we we've got to uh, that's 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 what I'm all about. That's what my my my, vo my uh, motivational shows are about. That's what I'm going to ask you about it. I love it, Joan. I want to. I've got so many questions, so ahead, I want to be fair. I want to be fair, and I want to really help anybody in the audience uh, learn more about Joan Minery Enterprises. So let's do the M's again. So we've got motivation, movement, and music. Yep. And you went through them in order. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question about each one of them. And we're sure. going to go backwards because we're talking about music now. Okay. So first, um, we discussed it when we were talking about your history and how you got to where you are. But music is such a big part of your life. Mm -hmm. How How do you keep it fresh? How does it not become stale? How, how, how do you keep music fresh? Okay, well, for me, um, it's fresh because my students are young. Okay? So, you know, so they, they, they keep me young, they keep it fresh. Um, the music industry, as you know, has taken a big hit in, in the last year. In fact, the radio has taken a big hit. Um, but it's just, you've got to keep everything. It's not so much current. Sometimes don't be afraid to recycle. You know, I've got a girl um, who's 13 years old right now who is only singing songs from the 1960s. Um, don't be afraid to recycle, okay? Because sometimes what was old is new again. You got to keep it fun. You got to keep it funky. You got to open up your mind. Um, I, when I first heard Billie Eilish, I didn't get her. I didn't, I, I, it just, it wasn't resonating with me. And then I went back to my youth and I thought about Cindy Loper. And I went, okay. That's what she is. Okay. And I was like, well, Joan, you loved Cindy. Is it crazy as she was? And so, yeah, just having an open mind and, re and remembering that it's it's about the students. It's about their lessons and their wants. Okay? And it's not about me, you know, like like maybe I and, and it's not that I, I've never been cool, okay? and that's for sure. Like I, you know, I think you're pretty cool, Joan. Well, well I know, but like, like, come on, I, I, I yeah, I am. L seven <laughs> um, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, and just being open and and um, just fighting the fighting the elements. Um, I like to give my my students lots of shows. Uh, again, we haven't been able to do that because of COVID. So it was like, okay, well, we'll do it back here. So what I did, and I'm just going to turn. So there's my, like, my, there's my, my curtains and that, and that's all over the house. So I just said, you know what, seeing as our, our lives have become on hold for right now, let's make this a studio. Okay, so we will give them something funny. So, you know, we, we renovated the house. We put music, like, like, there's just music notes everywhere. Like they're, they're on the ceiling. They're on my ceiling fans. They're everywhere. So when they walk in, they was like, okay, so this is your stage for now. Okay. And, you know, um, you know, went out and got some like, like really good recording equipment and, you know, started that. And so just give, just give them something to do and, and never being afraid to try things and, and to listen and, and watch videos and tutorials. But mostly, you gotta listen to my kids. So when they walk in and they wanna sing Billie Eilish and the other thing was all of a sudden the kids were walking in and going, can I sing some songs from Hamilton? And like, you're six. How do you even know that show? Oh, well, they're all listening to it on TikTok and, and, and uh, on Instagram. And I'd like to. I was like, okay, let's do it. 
So it's just kind of like, um, you know, instead of doing, you know, stuff that's always like, you know, very regimented and like you got to sing songs and the, and the syllabus says this, it's like, no, let them come in, let them dictate how their lessons be. Like, they've had so much upheaval and, and so many, we've, they've had adults telling them what to do for the last year and not what not to do. So when they come in here, it's like, how do you want your lesson to go? Okay. Do you want to do you want to do some percussion today? Do you want to work on the cahoon? Do you want to work on a tambourine? Do you want do you want to write a song and every they all they love writing their own music? Do you want to you want to just hammer out some stuff on uh, on the keyboard? Do you want to sing? Okay. Do you want and you give them back that permission so that they they they're so they're in control of, of their of their musical journey and um, like I like I see their faces when they walk in here like they're happy. And I, their parents have called me during when during, especially during the very first shutdown. It's like, listen, they gotta come see you because they're going crazy and they just they need their Joan fix. So it's like, okay, then bring them over. And sometimes I just I just I, sometimes I'll just sit here with the kids and we'll we'll watch like a like a um, like a video of Wicked um, uh, or you know or Hairspray or and, and you know. When, when when it was okay, like I go over and sit at their house and we'll watch musicals together. It's just that's how you keep it current. Like you, Joan. Yeah, there you go. Following right along with your music theme here, it's like you're singing the most beautiful song and you're hitting all the notes. Everything you said earlier in our interview, you're just following up on that. So what I heard from that, and it was beautiful by the way. Thank you for sharing it with the audience. Was that you keep it fresh by letting those you teach be in control of where it goes, but also being there to, in the event that they don't know what to do, being able to say, why don't we do this? And it's this really wonderful blend of, you know, you're, you're the one singing the song and, it, oh God, okay, it was great, but there's still so much more to go. So <laughs> I wanna move into movement then, okay? Um, when it comes to movement, Explain to my audience, our, you know, who are listening or watching right now, what do you mean movement? Why is movement so important? Well, it's, it's, it's dance. Um, we're going to take it back to the singing to get into the movement. This, this is your and, episode. Okay, so when a, uh, when a dancer dances, she doesn't, and I'm going, okay, or she or he, they don't dance just with their feet, okay? They dance with their ears, they dance with their heart, obviously, but they dance with their face, okay? How many times have you been at the Sanderson Center watching um, a dance recital? Do you actually watch what they're doing with their feet? No, you don't. You're watching what they're doing with their hands, okay? You're watching You're watching the acting, you're watching the, and it's mostly, you're watching this, okay? It's the eyes, okay? Same thing happens with a singer, okay? You can be a singing head, and sit, you know, sing and just sing, or you can be a performer, and that's where that's why movement is so important. So it's not just about movement; isn't just about dance, and it's not just about exercise and getting mobile. It's having movement in everything that you're doing, and you have to that you sometimes you just have to be your own song. I'm I'm a I'm I'm a huge uh, proponent. So not proponent, yeah, yeah, proponent of um, of moving. Okay, you you got to get up. You got to get up. We are human beings. We're we're put on this earth not to sit on a couch. We are nomadic by nature. Okay, we want to move. What what does a baby do? Okay, a baby it's it wants to move and then it rolls over. Okay, and then it starts creeping and then it starts crawling and then it stands up and then it starts walking. That's we're meant to move. That's what human beings are supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be moving. You know, we've become very sedentary um, and, and very, and of course, you know, with what's going on, you know, kind of cemented and, you know, stuck on social media, but we are meant to move. But all of the cultures around the world, we know this from the International Village Festival. When you go to the International Villages Festival, what is the entertainment? Okay. It's dancing, singing, dancing. movement. It's dancing, <clears throat> okay? So, and all of the cultures, okay? It doesn't matter where you go, whether you're going to East Asia, you're going to Asia, you're going to Africa, you're going to Australia, you're going to England. 
it's dancing and it's moving. Hey, we are meant to do that. It's not, it shouldn't be something that is foreign. But anyway, so um, because I am uh, like singing comes really easy to me. It is it's my talent. It's my gift. It, it was given to me. It's a, it's a hereditary thing. I, I, I do it well. Dancing is my passion. Okay? And it takes um, I have to work at it. Um, I'm a much better dancer than I was five years ago. But five years ago, I was a much better dancer than I was 15 years prior to that. Um, dancing is something that is constantly evolving and constantly creating and you're constantly getting better at it. Whereas singing, you find your voice at a certain time and maybe you sing songs better, but your voice, once it's developed and it's it's there, like you, you either have a great voice or, or you don't. Um, you can certainly sing songs better, but movement is it's just so important and i i love to dance i discovered zumba thanks to uh, brian and kelly sloat from art and motion dance studio uh, which i will always be grateful for um, and i will forever applaud and um, support uh, both brian and kelly sloat for um, offering me that uh, opportunity to come and try out um, three zumba classes and um, here we are you know 10 years later and again, I knew from my very first Zumba class, okay, so it was a Tuesday morning and Kelly had, uh, you know, uh, welcomed me in. I knew the day that I was doing Zumba that I would be teaching it. I knew it. I was like, oh yeah, I'll be teaching this soon. And sure enough, um, yeah, I started and I started at the Art Motion Dance Studio. But I had, I had danced my entire life and uh, movement on the islands is what Zumba is all about. But I um I encourage anyone to it's, and again it's not just about dance to get on get on your bicycle get on your canoe you know uh, walk and you know it's like you go out there you know what it's free hey okay? it's a, you know and I'm not saying anything about gym memberships but if you if you if you don't have the if you don't have the the cash or you don't have the 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 way with all to you know afford a gym membership just, just go walking on the trails. Hey, you said it yourself, yeah, it's, Joan. It's free. We were made yes. to move. We are. So if we were to move on to the final M, <laughs> <clears throat> if we were to move on to the final M, we've got music, we've got movement, and then we've got motivation. And anybody, I think, who's listening or watching this far into the interview, I mean, they must feel motivated. How could you? How could you not be hearing what you're saying and not feel motivated? I want to get up and move right now. I want to get up and sing. Um, talk to me about motivation. Why is it in you? Why do you feel so strongly about wanting to motivate others? I think a lot of that comes from my, my sister, Anne. Um, my sister, um, unfortunately, in uh, 1952, when she was two years old, was stricken with the polio virus. And, wow. um, and uh, as a result of it, um, it caused par paralysis from the waist down. Um, she has been disabled her entire life. And she has worked since she was 16. She uh, traveled the world for the Department of External Affairs and was a diplomatic attache for the Canadian Embassy. And um, just, I, I, she had to move, even though her legs did not work. She was like, I'm going to make sure that I move. But that's where my motivation comes from. It comes from her. Um, I didn't meet her until she was 16 years old because uh, there's quite an age difference between uh, both my brother, John and Anne, and then Bob and I, but, um, but she's just, she is my motivation and when I was going through my physical and, um, and mental uh, change, she was the, the biggest support, um, and still is, and always will be, uh, right behind me. And um, I just, I watch what she has done with her life. Um, you know, again, she's traveled the world, she's owned two homes, she owns a business here in Brantford, Boomer's Pet Treats, which is basically just a, uh, it's a retirement um, kitty fund. But I, like she has just been such a, an amazing person to, uh, to emulate. And um, she said to me once, um, she said, you are my legs. 
She said, I have, you know, like, you know, I can't, I can't travel, physically travel this route with you, but I have, and she said, but I have traveled every step with you. And, um, and, and I, I put that in my book, uh, Welcome My Way Back to Me. Um, it's just that she's been, she, I, like, I watched that. My, my parents, um, uh, when my dad was, uh, you know, my dad was in the, the war. Uh, my mom was a nurse, but my dad was a sailor. Um, my dad came out of the, uh, the Navy and joined the police force and he was an English Bobby. Unfortunately, um, their daughter was stricken with polio and, um, the best, um, medicine and the best, um, rehabilitation was over here. So, you know, they packed up everything and, and came to Canada. My dad had $12 in his wallet when he, when he landed. And, um, you know, they d moved to Hamilton very briefly and then moved to Brantford lived on Mohawk Street, then moved on Park Ave, and, and uh, 60 years ago, moved uh, into this house where I am. And uh, my brother Bob was just, a, you know, by John and Ann were uh, alive, and then Bob was born here, and so was I. So, yeah, so that's my, I, it's, a, it's a family thing, you know, and, it, and Minnery is, is an M as well. But that's where uh, we have such a strong conviction and a, st a strong drive for community. Uh, my dad was uh, is, is on the books as one of the five founding members of the CCF party here in Brantford. Uh, we went through all of that craziness in the 60s, um, you know, with uh, Molotov cocktails being thrown through the front window. And uh, my dad had some stories. Um, and I get, you know, the marching and the, you know, the stuff that went on in order, in order to get, uh, you know, all of that um, to where it is today. But that's where my motivation comes from. And, um, you know, I, I've always, I, I do, I go to the beat of my own drum and always have. I like being the leader. It's not that I like being in control. I like being the leader. Um, and I said, I, I think that comes back, you know, right from the very start of this interview. I, I wanted to be a doctor. Um, I, I wanted to heal people. And um, so, but I found that my calling, my healing was going to come through a different avenue which was going to be through music and and that's where that's where it is so you know there are many yeah. many ways to heal people joan yeah. thank you yeah. so much for sharing that story well you're welcome with yeah. us and for <laughs> we're going to move right into the theme you even touched upon it and i mean when i thought to myself like every week on the show i am interview these incredible people and I always have to come up with something that I think, when I think about them, what do I think about? And, and what's something that maybe I could ask them that they could share with my audience that they might be able to take and use in their life and their job and their, in their, you know, day to day. And for Joan Minnery, and I know I said it before, you know, I think Joan, I think music, I think events, I think whatever, but I also think this, and it's simple. You said it yourself. Uh, you march to the beat of your own drum. You are a force to be reckoned with. Where does that come from? In your own words, what does that mean? What does it mean to march to the beat of your own drum? Um, it comes from me being told that uh, I will not succeed at things. And I just like, watch me. Okay? Yeah, and it's, it's funny. Sometimes you're, and, and, and I know that you will, um, I know you will relate to this, Josh. Sometimes our worst critics are the ones that hold us up the highest because it's, you know what, you are, you, you're trying to beat me down so much that I am going to turn this around and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you that I will do this. I will be successful. And, you know, and the bricks that you are throwing at me, I'm going to use those as the stepping stones to my next venture. So you want powerful. to powerful. It's like you yeah. rehearsed this, Joan. No, no, no. It's just like, like it's, yeah, but it's like, you want to throw bricks at me, you go right ahead. But I'm gonna I I'm gonna catch them and I'm putting them down and I'm walking on them to my next musical or my my next uh, motivational gig or you know my next event. You know, but and it's like and yeah people you know in the back I'm short. Okay. I'm very very short. Um, been overweight most of my life. I've had, you know, I've shrunk, I've, I've big and shrunk and, and fat. So you, you, you deal with that. And I'm a woman, okay? And I'm a blonde woman. And 
you have all of that that society says should be um, the reason that you know that's that they're plus they're pluses and a lot of the times they're not um, you know I, I I'm not I, I'm not a six foot you know man in a suit you know I am a little tiny blonde woman you know walking into a place and I I got I have a lot of people who say when they meet me, they're really surprised at how tiny I am. He's like, he's like, you are such a force to be reckoned with that we just thought you were this, you know, you know, this Amazon woman. And it's like larger oh. than life. Yeah, it's just larger than life. But it's like, yeah, you're you're not going to beat me down. And um, I, I've had, I've been very, very fortunate. I had a great and have, you know, mom and dad have passed, but I, I had a great family. Um, and like, they were just so supportive right from the word go. And when I wanted to do Elvis fast, you know, mom and dad, my uncle Joe, it was, a, a all three of them are gone. I said, listen, you go do it. You do whatever you need to do. We will help you. We'll help you out physically, financially, spiritually. And I was like, okay, well, you know what, you know, BJ's only six. And it's like, no, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of him. You go do what you got to do. You know, but but it will be part of it. You know, so when I've got seventy five Elvises in the backyard and my dad's on the barbecue flipping hamburgers, you know, and it was going, Wow, this is kinda neat. It's like, yeah. Now so it's uh I I've been, I've been blessed. I've been very blessed with that. Um I I've been really lucky uh with people in the community, you know, uh, rallying behind me and, and always supportive. Um, Doug Hunt, I, I can't say enough fantastic words about him, uh, right from the get go been that Chris Friel, um, for sure been a, a huge supporter of mine. Uh, Dave Levac, um, you know, you know, big, 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 big hugs, but, um, there's just, it's that like you, like, I, I want to give back because there's been so many people who've given back to me. Um, I won't say what what he did, but uh, Mayor Mayor Hancock once um, handed me a gift that I will never ever forget, and I will cherish till my again getting 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 all uh, steamy eyed here. But it's that type of support and that type of love that you know when you feel it, you want to give back to your community. And, and I've just been lucky. I've been I've been really lucky. I've been uh, I've had some great friends and and um, at wonderful students and and a lot of help from parents of students who um, who uh, you know I says I and I think my students they see that they believe they believe me. They believe that you know that when I show up at their events and I show up at their at their weddings that I'm their friend and uh, and I, I think that um, I think that comes out in my performances and uh, and it certainly comes out in my kids. So let me tell that's... you this, Joan. You are an inspiration and it's simple to me when you're somebody like you who does march to the beat of their own drum, but in such a positive manner, motivating and inspiring people as you go, people want to rally behind that. People want to support that. And I think that the fact that you were so adamant about you wouldn't be able to do it without that support leads credence to that. Because to me, myself, you know, where I have gotten to where I am today, yeah, I'm ambitious. Yeah, I'm full of energy. Yeah, I'm positive. And yeah, I'm willing to put in the hard work. But for what? I wouldn't be able to be where I am today if it wasn't for the incredible individuals I surround myself with every single day. And uh, I like to think that I march to the beat of my own drum too. Oh, you but, most assuredly do. <laughs> and it's because it's because of people like you. Because when I did meet you all those years ago, you were just something else. Just watching you direct and watching you run that show and just when you weren't around, the way that people spoke about you is you were just, like you said in your own words, just so big and so larger than life. Um, I think that this is a really great way to move in, especially because you said it yourself that giving back to your community has been a fundamental part of your growth and where you are today. Every week on my show, I like to ask my guests to give a shout out to a community organization or an initiative or something that they're a part of. And uh, I was going to ask you, uh, you know, who do you want to shine the light on today? 100% Dr. 
crossing all bridges. Okay, I am uh, very honored to be, uh, when COVID isn't happening, um, the musical director uh, for their musical theater program. Um, a lot of the individuals that attend Crossing All Bridges, I have either uh, taught line dancing or Zumba or done plays with. And, and a lot of the individuals uh, come out to our shows. I, I've known a lot of them since they were young um, and have worked with them through uh, Community Living or through W. Ross or through Lansdowne. And I'm very proud that they're my friends and uh, I would do anything and have and will again for crossing all bridges. So that's my shout out 100% in particular to Barbie Nelson. Okay. We really miss you. Crossing all bridges is an absolutely amazing organization here in our community and you know especially now with covid and the way that things are i mean these organizations do need our support so even if you don't have the ability to make like a financial donation there are still plenty of ways uh just to support these groups uh sharing stuff on social media taking part in their events volunteering your time if it's available and i guess if they wanted to they could reach out through you oh 100 percent. you can reach out through me i can put you uh, in contact with uh the executive director and any of the, the program directors. Um, Crossing All Bridges um, is a, well, they call it a school. But it's, it's kind of, it's like, um, it's like fame, to be honest. So they, they, they go in and they do, they do all these fantastic things all day and it's in a school setting. So they, they'll do cooking, they'll do uh, plays, they'll do singing, they'll do exercise, they'll do crafts, and they actually, they do school for- Well, no wonder you're involved. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, and um, I was very lucky um, uh, for in 2019, and uh, we did the, the musical Grease with them. And um, yeah, and, and we were going to do um, a show in 2020. We we're actually doing Wizard of Oz. Uh, but we'll probably do that in uh, maybe 2022 when things uh, get better. But yeah, I am um, Crossing All Bridges, a fantastic organization. Uh, they've taken over uh, the former, uh, gosh, I forget, I can't forget the name of the school. I think it was Christ the King. Um, no, it's not Christ the King. What school? Do you, do you remember what school they took? I have no idea. I know exactly what you're talking I, about, I, too. I, I knew I you were going to ask. It is. It's, it's the, the Catholic school that was attached to St. John's. But anyway, so that's where it is. And um, yeah, it's uh, the school right behind Crossing it. Crossing It's now all called bridges. Cro Crossing All Bridges. And um, and uh, that's where it is. Um, yeah, so we're... Thank we're you. Just, uh, Thank you for that shout out, Joan. That leads us to the end of the episode. And at the end of every episode... I always want to ask my guests, if anybody who's watching or listening, you know, I'm sure they've fallen in love with Joan Minery and maybe they want to be a part of your story and, and go where you are and be a part of that adventure. Where do they go? How do they follow you online? How do they get in touch? Tell us okay, everything. Well, yeah, the easiest thing to do, is I could give you all sorts of websites and all social, uh, social media handles. Just go to my website. It's really easy. JoanMinery.com. J-O-A-N. M I N N E R Y dot com and all of the links for my dance lessons, my music lessons, my motivational shows, all about me, all about the band, all about my students, you can find on that website. It's a very detailed website, but instead of giving you all sorts of stuff, I am, yeah, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and all of that. But again, those links you will find all on my website, joeminery.com. You don't even need to do www anymore. They've taken that out. Okay. It's just joeminery.com. Joan, thank you so much for coming on the show, for sharing your story, for answering all of my crazy questions. I meant what I said. You are just such an incredible human being who does so much for this community, for everybody you surround yourself with. And uh, I said it before and I'll say it again because it bears repeating. People want to support people like you because you're incredible and uh, they know that by supporting you they're supporting so many other people and thank you so much for letting me be a part of it for coming onto my show for sharing your story this has been absolutely incredible. Well in the words of the man himself thank you thank you very much. We have a great group of guests lined up for future episodes. You've been watching Off the Wall. I'm your host, Joshua Wall, and we'll see you next week.